actually going to be harvesting hairs from the back of your head. We're going to take out the grass one by one. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today is kind of a different thing. I am getting a procedure done tomorrow. It's surgery, but it's not like major. I'm just gonna say it. I'm getting a hair transplant tomorrow. I understand that like looking at me, you probably don't think that. Or maybe you do. This is more of a preventative measure I'm doing. I've elected to go with the Neograft procedure, which is the newer procedure of a hair transplant. I have been very insecure about my hair for a very long time, actually since high school, I used to get made fun of by my history teacher. He would walk behind me in front of the whole class and point at the back of my head and call out my bald spot. It sucked. I understand like that he was joking and he wasn't trying to be mean, but it really hurt. My hair's always been very thin, even when I was younger. And I've noticed as I've gotten older, it started to recede a little bit. Now I have used Minoxidil for the past 10 years. I just started Propecia. But after doing a lot of research, I have decided to get a hair transplant. Dr. Grace Lee Pang, she is so sweet and so wonderful and has really walked me through every step of this process. I've been FaceTiming her for like two years. We've been doing calls back and forth before I was actually ready to commit to this because it's a big deal. Dr. Pang talked me through everything. She kind of showed me where my hairline was going to be and I would, I'm just so excited. I'm ready, it's something that I think will make me more confident. My goal is to just kind of like round out and like fill in these areas because even where I have hair, it's just like very thin all in front. And the same here, just to kind of like round this. And so I am not trying to have like the thickest, best head of hair. I just want it to look a little bit better. And I think that everyone should do things that they want to do for their own bodies. Does everyone, hold on, this is totally beside the point. Does everyone else's thumbs do this when they try to do a thumbs up? Because some people like go straight, but like mine goes all the way back. Um, I did have to go get my hair cut again. I got it cut yesterday and then had to go back because she was like, no, it's not short enough. So I went to the barber, I got my head shaved shorter than I ever go. The procedure starts at 7 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I'm not a morning person, so Karen's gonna drive me to Beverly Hills. I'm doing 1,500 graphs. I'm awake the entire time. I'm gonna be chilling, playing my Pokemon games, watching TikTok. They're not like, in the old days, they used to like cut a, like a portion of the back of your head. It used to be really intense. The new procedures are so non-invasive. Flex individual hairs. They don't cut anything out of your head. You're numbed up so you don't feel anything. It's a very, from what I understand, painless experience. After getting lip filler, I can do anything. So, <laughs> I'm not worried. All right, it's the morning of the surgery. I got my little driver here. So I have a canker sore patch in. I'm still not nervous. And that's it. I'm just ready. All right, let's do a what's in my surgery bag. AirPods and a Nintendo Switch. And that's all I brought today. Got on the flip flops for comfort. Active booty joggers. Oh my god, we're here. Hi. Hello. Okay, so we're here. I'm with Dr. Pang and I'm so excited. So we're gonna be doing yeah. some hair restoration. I know we've always talked about how your widow's peak areas are much thinner mm -hmm. than the rest of your hair and also how they go back a little bit. And so that area just seems so much more sparse and especially in photos and other things, especially since you do so much photos and filming. I feel like it really shows as if you have less hair density than you really do. And so I think our goal just is to just do a little touch up here and there, just enhance this area. I wanna round out this peak area because I feel like you don't need it so far back. Mm -hmm. You have some baby hairs here, which I love. That's basically from all our PRP injections and kind of getting that area primed and ready for some hair transplantation. No two sides would be identical, but the goal is to also lower this area a little bit. Um, I got in trouble because I didn't follow the instructions and instruction number one was eat breakfast and I don't like breakfast. <laughs> So they had to find me granola bars and I feel really bad. Also, I was just given Valium. I think I'm getting like other like anesthetics. This is where the magic is gonna happen. And wow. so wait, how long is this procedure gonna be? It's gonna be a few hours. All right, I'm feeling a little loopy, but I will say we, step one is that I'm gonna get numbed up and that's the only like really like part that I'm gonna feel. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm ready. The first part of the procedure, you're gonna be face down, almost like in a massage table. Okay, and we're actually going to be harvesting hairs from the back of your head. We're going to take out the grafts one by one, okay, by hand using the Neograft machine. And 
And then after that, I have someone helping me who's going to be counting each of the graphs individually. Then we'll get ready and prepare the frontal areas in order to place the grafts in. All right, we finished the first part of the procedure. All of the harvesting has been done on the back of my head. It was truly like painless. I didn't feel anything. I'm so like loopy and sleepy and I've had no coffee, which is like something I would obviously never do to myself. So we just did a blood draw. I got PRP. PRP is like taking the plasma from my blood and it just acts you as like fertilizer, right? Yeah, so basically platelet rich plasma is actually part of your blood. So we draw your blood and we actually split it down so that the white blood cells, the red blood cells, and then all the other impurities are taken out of the blood. And then what we have left over is the plasma that's rich in platelets and all the growth factors. I still want you to look natural and really look like nothing was ever done. Yeah. But I do want it to have a little bit of a gentle curvature. But what we're really filling in is all the way over here to where the peak Yeah. and where it's very sparse. Okay. okay? Yeah. I'm not lowering your hairline. And I love that your hairline looks very natural. It's not just like one straight line across. Yeah. That is exactly what I want. Good. Yeah, literally, like this is perfect. So those are all my baby hairs. Mm -hmm. Are your babies? Oh my gosh, I worked so hard growing you. So now I'm getting numbed up. And they're gonna poke me 1,500 times. A little more than that, because I got a lot of hairs. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's go. We are on lunch break right now. They just got done um, planting a lot of the grafts. Not completely done, just taking a break. I'm eating lunch right now, a little sandwich, and then we get right back to it. So today is day number two. I'm on my way to the checkup, the post-op checkup, and she's gonna tell me how everything's going, how it looks, and if I'm gonna be pretty. Oh, that's We're amazing. here with Dr. Pei. Hi. Great. I went home yesterday, and I was like, I'm just gonna relax. I slept for four hours as soon as I got home. Good. And I made Good. myself get out of bed to like eat dinner, and then I went to bed at like nine or ten. <laughs> so. Right. So at least you rested. Oh yes. So you're gonna have some forehead swelling. That's yeah. completely normal. I noticed okay? that, you can see. And I want you to remember to stay elevated when you're sleeping. Okay, because okay. last night I had two or three pillows. I'm doing that for the next week or so. The next week, wow, okay. I'm actually taking off your, all your dressing now, so oh, you're wow. not gonna have any more dressings after this. Okay? Ooh. Have that little bit of swelling in the forehead. Mm -hmm. So sometimes this swelling will then kind of come down towards the eyes. Okay. Sometimes people even get tiny bit of bruising underneath the eyes, and it's just because the swelling settled down. Okay. okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> I have a little Frankenstein forehead. That really is good. so funny to me. <laughs> swelling. Yeah, it's normal, okay? I was sending my friends like pictures of like the holes in my head, yeah. and they were all like disgusted. Oh and I was like, God, I think it's so cool. So cute. They're baby little holes. <laughs> So I'm like really happy with how you're looking right now. Okay. Wow, I mean, even where the hair harvest sites were, where we took each of the little follicles, you're barely a day after your procedure, and all I see are just tiny sub one millimeter dots, and in a week, you won't be able to see anything, and wow. your hair will have grown. Wow. 1,535. Oh, right. thank you so much. You're amazing. Okay. So this is two weeks in. I just finished my first workout in two weeks and I have not been able to sweat literally for two whole weeks. That felt so good. So I like, I was gonna do an update before, but as soon as I found out that I could work out, I started working out. But this is how my hair looks. Not working out for two weeks, honestly, is the hardest part of this entire procedure. I'm a super like quick sweater. So like I'll start sweating, like going up the stairs, I'll start sweating. Like, like I was playing ping pong last week and started sweating. Those are the like the hardest things you have to be like really mindful of and keep track of. Other than that, the itchiness has been the biggest annoyance, I would say like in these two weeks, especially like the back of my head itched a lot. Honestly, Say the front where they did the transplant actually doesn't itch that much at all. I really have to avoid touching it. There's still tenderness in the back of my head. Like if I rub it a little bit, it's sore and I don't know how long that lasts. No pain here. I'm on Christmas vacation or Christmas break in Indiana with our family. So we're <laughs> about to fly home in a few days. Also, I flew three days after my procedure. So like traveling is not something you have to worry about. Another thing that I've had to learn how to do on the third night, I had to go to a party. It was like literally 72 hours after my surgery. Like, 
like put water on my head for the first time, you can't let like water pressure touch your hair. You have to take like a little cup and mix like a little bit of baby shampoo in it and then like dump it on your head, but it has to be like lukewarm water and not hot water. It was like taking care of like little baby children on the top of my head, so that was really stressful, but I kind of like let the water drip around my head and like have the water like push my hair in a direction. You can't use a comb, but as long as you're not like touching your scalp, you can kind of play with it. So since my hair was long enough, I used a comb like on the back, get the top over, and then I would take the comb and like lightly like grab the front hairs and like pull it back, but I wouldn't touch my scalp. I wouldn't touch any of like the donor area. To this day, have not used any hairspray, hair wax, dry shampoo, just baby shampoo. I took the baby shampoo and I used it as hair wax on my hairs in the front to kind of style it, and that's worked. I will be able to wash my hair in one more week like regularly. These scabs kind of should have fallen off by now, but they haven't, but they're like starting to. Like you can see it's getting like flaky and kind of less attractive looking, but that's just a part of the process. Not many people have noticed, and if they have, like it's been, like they have to be like right up like close to you to notice the back of my head also healed very quickly. The hair grew back around it very fast and it was really hard to notice that I had anything done. Like this has been so much easier than I thought it would be. So I am officially four weeks post-op right now. I just started putting product in my hair a few days ago. My doctor cleared me to just barely start using like waxes and hairsprays and dry shampoos, but that took a little over a month. So that was kind of difficult, but where I'm at right now is all of my scabs have fallen off. You can see just like the little baby hairs in the corners. But basically, if you like look at me, I kind of look how I did right before I got the procedure. So that's the hardest thing about this surgery is that you don't get those instant results. You have to really wait. And I was talking to my doctor and she said, I can expect to see probably like 80% growth in about eight months. So it's really like a year long journey until I'm gonna see the full 100% results. Confidence wise, I already feel a little bit better because even though these areas aren't filled in, they are a little bit darker already. And so on camera and when I'm like around people, my hairline looks a little bit more full already, which is great. I definitely feel more confident than I did four weeks ago, which is fantastic. And to know that it only gets better from here is really, really exciting. As far as pain, I still have a little bit of sensitivity and like itchiness in the back of my head. The front, really, I don't, I'm not like sensitive. I'm not itchy, anything. So the next steps, I'm gonna have a follow-up appointment with my doctor and then we're gonna be doing PRP, which is the injections where the hair can really grow. So I think I'm gonna do that, I think once a month or once every other month. That's not something that's required. It's just something that if you can't afford to do that, it's going to expedite your results and make them the best they can be. I was really surprised at how many DMs I've gotten and messages from people, men who are interested in having this procedure, or interested in doing hair restoration, but I feel like many people like don't talk about it. And this is something that I think is an insecurity for most men, and it's not something to be ashamed of. I also just started Finasteride, the generic term for it, about a month or so ago, and I've had no side effects. And I talked to a few of my doctors actually, and they said there's nothing to worry about. So I highly recommend Propecia. I've been on that for a month, and even before I got my hair transplant, I started to see new growth and new baby hairs, which is really exciting. So that's been a part of my journey. I've been using Rogaine for the last 10 years. I don't know if I said that already, and that helped. Something I do want to mention that my doctor and I talked about, as soon as you notice you have hair loss, as soon as you notice that you're starting to be insecure, that's the moment you have to act, because by the time you realize that there's hair loss, you're at the point where it's starting to become too late. So the sooner you get on Rogaine, the sooner you start taking Propecia, Finasteride, the better your hair results are going to be because you really can only preserve what you have unless you're doing a surgical intervention. You can't really ever regrow hair unless you have surgery. Talk to your doctor, get a Propecia prescription. You're gonna be so happy you did. Don't put it off. That's my biggest advice. With hair restoration as well, I didn't really need it terribly bad, but it was more preventative. And the sooner I had this surgery, the more natural my results are going to be. So these hairs right here, everything in front, this isn't even actually all that they transplanted. A lot of these hairs, these babies, they put in, then they've fallen out. And that's normal within like the first two to three weeks, but the bulb and the seed of the hair is still in there. So I'm not even gonna know really how much is filled in through here probably a few more weeks to even start to see them sprout. I can touch like right here and it just feels like really prickly and it's just kind of like these hairs from the back of my head that are just poking out. But every, all like the little baby hairs that you see, most of these baby hairs are just like little prickles that are going to fall out. It's freaky and weird to see. So this is just like you get it done and then you like, oh shit. 
my hair's falling out, it didn't work, and it's just about being patient. After three weeks, you can also start washing your hair again, or at least that's kind of where I'm at. I'm still using baby shampoo. Once the bottle runs out, I'm gonna switch back to my regular. I stopped my Rogaine a month ago, and I have to wait a full month to start using Rogaine again but I can still take my Propecia every day. My doctor said I may want to do it again, I may want to like fill in other areas if I'm, I'm thinning further back, so this is something that I would love to do again. I can't wait to update you guys, like a three month update, a six month, and then maybe like a one year update, so you can kind of see the progress, but after this video, I am gonna do a Q and A, because I'm sure I missed a lot of things that you have questions about. So if there's anything that you're wondering about, leave a comment and I'm gonna do a video very soon and just answer all of the questions that you may have around FUE and hair restoration. So I hope this video is helpful. Thank you for watching. I typically do like fitness content or vlog content behind the scenes type of thing. So not usually hair videos, but you can follow my hair journey if you want um, by subscribing to this channel and giving this a like. I will link my doctor's information below. So if you are interested in the procedure or have any questions, she was fantastic. Dr. Peng made me feel so comfortable and so relaxed. She's made this experience absolutely incredible, so I'd highly recommend her. And if you are self-conscious about your hair and you wanna do something about it, everyone goes through this, everyone has these insecurities. I hope that you don't feel weird or stupid for wanting to improve your hairline or wanting to know more about this procedure. I think it's very normal. So until next time, I will see you in the next video.